guys, I'm Marilyn and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be continuing my series on the books you should read to improve your writing with five more books I think can help you master specific aspects of writing. So let's dive into it. So first up is the Shades of Magic series by V.E. Schwab. So the first book is A Darker Shade of Magic. Second book is A Gathering of Shadows. And third up is A Conjuring of Light. Now, what this book or these books will teach you is creating an amazing, unique world, but in a ca character-driven story. Sorry, there was a weird light flare there. I'm sorry for that. There are some books where the intricacy of the world and the reason the world is the way it is and the technicalities of it is kind of the main element of the book and there are many readers who find that very attractive but I am very attracted to character driven stories and this is why this series was so great to me because it has an amazing world but it doesn't go into too much of the technicalities around how the world got that way or why it is that way it's more character driven so what these books are about is that there are four different londons red london gray london white london and black london and they are only specific people who can travel between the four worlds or the four cities and they are called asteri and they have specific magic powers they can use their blood to do magic and travel between these worlds and it is a very very exciting series to read but what is great is this idea of the four Londons and the way that the four Londons are set up and the conflict that is introduced as a result of how that world works is done so amazingly well in a series that I think is very much character Driven. Then next up is the Infernal Devices series by Cassandra Clare. The first one in the series is Clockwork Angel. Then there is Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess. Now this is set in Victorian London. It's kind of a steampunk uh, magic paranormal book. It is a series by the same author who wrote the mortal instruments and it's kind of a not a prequel to that but it takes place way before the mortal instruments or you would maybe know it as the shadow hunters series takes place and it is also about the shadow hunters who are people who hunt demons and it is about this girl who comes to london not knowing that she is one of them and a very powerful one at that and what these books do so well is a love triangle now i know this is kind of a controversial statement a lot of people feel like love triangles are very taboo you should not have a love triangle in your book and other people love it but this book does it in a very unique way and I can't spoil it but if you want to know how to write a love triangle well, how to get it right, make everyone happy, then you should read The Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clay. Then third up is the Under the Eagle series by Simon Scarrow. Now there are a million books in the series. I went through my historical fiction phase in high school so I read most of the series but I stopped at some point. So I'm not going to show you all of the books because that would be like half of my bookshelf. So this is the first book under the eagle but there are also books that are called The Eagle Conquers, When the Eagle Hunts, The Eagle and the Wolves, the Eagle's Prey, The Eagle's Prophecy, The Eagle in the Sand, Centurion, Gladiator, The Legion, Praetorian, and The Blood Crows. So what this will, this series will teach you is obviously writing great historical fiction. Now this is set in ancient Rome during the time of Emperor Claudius. So it follows the beginning of the books are a lot about Rome 
I want to say colonizing, but I don't think they called it that in those days, uh, Britain. And then it also moves on through looking at the provinces of Persia, at some of the things that happen in Rome itself. They are just exploration through all of these different provinces and follows two military men, um, Marco, who is a centurion, and then Cato, who in this book is still just a legionnaire. So, why I say these books will teach you historical fiction is once again about character-driven stories. Yes, I love ancient Rome. I absolutely adore reading about and watching things set in ancient Rome. So it was nice for me to be in this world and experience the technicalities, but what really hooks you throughout this series is the two characters and their relationship and you want to follow them through whichever adventure they go to next. So if you want to write historical fiction and you, it's difficult to write historical fiction and you want to get the balance right between story, character and being historically accurate, I would really recommend anything by Simon Scarrow, but my favorite is the Under the Eagle series. Then fourth, we have Paradise by Toni Morrison. Now, I firmly believe that anything by Toni Morrison is a great lesson in writing. We did this in our English studies course and I absolutely adored it. So it's about this small uh, blacks only town in America, in Oklahoma. And there's this convent, it's not really a convent, but I always see it as a convent in my mind. It's just basically an old house that used to be a convent, I think, or used to be a whole house. I'm not sure, I read this a long time ago. But there's a house on the outskirts of the town that is kind of a halfway house for women who have been through some shit in their lives and mostly been through some shit at the hands of men and how these women don't really fit in with the town's ideals and how they are ostracized and well uh, this is not really a spoiler because it's the first scene of the book and they are then murdered so what this book will teach you is how to write a gripping story while still having a strong theme because if you want to write a book that says something it's easy to go off in kind of a lecturing uh, ranting mode where there's not much story it's more of you giving your opinion and what Toni Morrison does so well with all of her books and with this one I think in particular is is keeping you hooked with the story and the characters while still having a strong theme flowing through the book so if you want to write something that is will change mindsets and address a specific issue but it will still hook your readers then Toni Morrison is definitely something that you should read and then finally we have To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf now this might be somewhat of a controversial statement but I'm not a big Virginia Woolf fan um, and I'm not going to say that this is my favorite book, but it will teach you a specific aspect of writing and that is stream of consciousness. Now, stream of consciousness is a method of narration where you don't write in first person, it's third person, but you go into the minds of the characters and there's no separation. So I like to write in third person deep, which means that you also go into the thoughts of the characters, but you can easily distinguish when it's the character's thoughts and when it is the narration. With stream of consciousness, it flows effortlessly from narration to interior thought to the point where you don't even realize that you've gone into the character's head, but you kind of just know it instinctually. So this is a very specific type of writing, specific type of narration. You also get free indirect discourse, which is something that Jane Austen did very well. But stream of consci consciousness is kind of taking it a step further in that absolutely not even blurring the lines but erasing the lines between external narration and internal thought so if you want to do that type of narration study to the lighthouse by virginia wolf so those are the books that I would recommend for you to improve specific aspects of your writing. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. As always, you can find me on my website, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, and Twitter. Remember to subscribe to my channel and ring that little bell if you want writing advice videos every single Friday and some bonus content. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Bye!